This video is going to walk through some of the basics of Enscape as a plugin for SketchUp for doing landscape modeling. We're going to start by just creating a terrain from scratch and we'll keep the grid spacing at 10 feet and create a pretty sizable grid. We'll go in this plane first and about 800 feet that direction. We'll then go 800 feet in the opposite direction. We'll zoom out, we'll start to use our smooth tool to create this terrain. So we'll double click inside, grab the smooth tool, and adjust the radius. I'll bump this up to 90 feet and begin to project up the terrain. After creating some undulations in this terrain, what we want to do is actually convert it to a single mesh. And to do that, we'll double click inside, we'll triple click to select everything, and then we'll just say from contours to create a new terrain uh, that's just a single face. Uh, to delete everything else, we'll then triple click again, zoom in, shift click to unselect that single terrain and hit delete. What this does is it uh, takes away all of the, the grid uh, that we have created, we're left with just this single plane. The next thing that we'll do is we'll drape a path going across it. We'll create an arc to become the basis for that path. We need to move this path up in the air and offset it 8 feet. We'll then select the path and select the drape tool to drape this path over the surface. We don't need the path anymore, so we can select everything and delete that. This leaves us with a terrain that has three different faces, and we can start to apply some basic materials to this. We'll select inside the component and begin to place a grass on either side, and we'll choose a gravel for the path. At this point, we'll orbit around to a first-person view. And we'll start Enscape. To get your Enscape toolbar, uh, once you have the program installed, you'll go to View, Toolbars, you can check Enscape, and it will become a toolbar that you can dock up top. We'll click Start Enscape to start the program. Now, Enscape is a real-time renderer, which means that we can see both what's happening in SketchUp and what's happening in our viewport here. Now, I'll show both of these right now, and if you have dual monitors, this is probably the best way to work. But uh, in my case, I'm going to maximize this. We're going to do uh, synchronized views. By clicking this, we actually sync whatever we are seeing in SketchUp is what we will then see in Enscape. And so as we move around and shift our view of this area, so does our Enscape model. Now, if we navigate, and you can see the basic controls over here, as we sort of navigate down in Enscape, you'll see that what was our grass material, a flat grass material in SketchUp, is actually a pretty dynamic grass in Enscape. And it will read and interpret some of the base materials that you'll put in SketchUp. Uh, it will translate those in Enscape. Other materials, like this gravel material over here, as we get closer and see it in SketchUp, it's going to be this flat material right here. Uh, it is still that flat material inside of Enscape. And what we can do is update that with the Enscape materials uh, in, um, inside of SketchUp by going here and uh, updating with a material. But for our focus, we actually want to look at the asset library and bringing in some different assets, specifically trees, onto our terrain and kind of creating a background uh, for our trail walking through uh, this landscape. So we'll click on the asset library. We'll select vegetation. And we'll click the tags tree. From here, we're going to see a lot of different assets that are already built into Enscape. We'll grab this elm tree and we'll place it here and start to click it around the scene. We'll choose a different tree and begin to place this in the scene as well. You can cycle through and see different ones with a scale figure to understand how big that tree is going to be. I'll grab this maple here. Now we have a pretty simplified view in the SketchUp model, but as we zoom in and maybe find a angle for this, 
we'll go to our Enscape view and we'll see that we've got these trees in here. We can continue to move these around uh, and add additional trees to this scene. We'll click at back in the Enscape scene to see some of the trees that we've placed in here. Now when placing trees in Enscape, you might find that they're all the same size and sort of same orientation. And what we can do is use a script in SketchUp to modify this to make it more random. We'll go back into SketchUp and we'll go to our extension warehouse uh, and specifically look for the CLF scale and rotate multiple. This particular extension is going to allow us to select all of these trees in here. And then go to the extension, scale and rotate multiple, and we'll do it scale and rotate randomly. This allows us to make the minimum scale factor 1 so that it will stay at least that size. We'll scale them up 1.25, which means they'll grow up to 25%. The minimum rotation will leave at 0 and the maximum at 360, and that will get us a variety of sort of spinning these in all directions. And we'll just say OK and watch everything spin right here. We'll come back to this view, find a view that we really like from a first person view standpoint. And we might go ahead and save this as a scene. We'll click back over to Enscape and see what that view is beginning to look like. Now from here, additionally, we'll want to put some people in here. We might want to find a better view that doesn't have the sort of jagged straight lines of the, uh, the path as it's sort of gone over these uh, tessellated surfaces. So we might uh, continue to refine that decision. But for now, we'll go back into our asset library. We will choose people by unchecking trees, clicking on people, and in this case, clicking on sport and finding some people that are jogging. When we look at them in Enscape, we'll notice that we have these two joggers, but in this case, we want to spin them around to where they are facing down the path. So much like any object in SketchUp, we can simply click on this, get our rotation, And we'll finalize the scene like this. Now for this particular rendering, we might add some additional site amenities, put a banding along the edge of this and update the material for this path. And there's all sorts of different things that you might add in SketchUp and continue to refine uh, through the Enscape asset library and the materials that exist there. But once we get to a certain point, what we can do is begin to change uh, some of the different views and visual settings of this by in Enscape, clicking on visual settings clicking on image and getting to adjust contrast of the highlights and shadows. Uh, definitely the lens flare, clicking on atmosphere, changing the intensity of fog if it's in the morning, the intensity of wind if we're doing an animation, clicking on the sky and changing both the density of the clouds, ramping those up, and even changing the background from white to, if you can still see in the background, changing it to mountains, or forest, something to give some sort of backdrop uh, if you can see beyond the model. And before we export this, another important component might be the time of day. Using U and I, we can scroll through some different times of the day. And if we needed to change where the model was, uh, the light was coming from, we can go back to our SketchUp model and in this view, update or change the uh, rotation of the model or the geolocation. In this case, I'm going to update this scene with this view right here. Another quick way to adjust uh, the time of day is to hold shift, use your right click and sort of slide back and forth, and this is an easy way to test out different shadows. Playing around with the visual settings is one of the more uh, impressive uh, parts of Enscape. Uh, specifically, if you want to change the depth of field to blur the background, um, adjusting the camera from perspective to two-point perspective, all the different uh, corrections and blurs that you can uh, tinker with uh, inside these visual settings. For our purposes, we're ready to export this. We can do a screenshot uh, right here by clicking on this, saving it to our desktop, and exporting it as a PNG or JPEG in this case. 
you can see between these three views you can get a variety of outputs and different vantage points for essentially the same landscape. A program like Enscape when combined with SketchUp can give you really quick results while not being as demanding as other rendering programs on your computer.